Parental discretion is advised. This week on the Mayhem Show, it is the thing that you have been waiting for. That's right, folks. It's the Mayhemies. Stick around. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Chachi Plays for Kids. Find out how you can participate and donate. ChachiPlays.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is Tuesday. You are here. Hi. Or it is a future date and time, and you're listening to it through your ear holes on your uh, cast pod player of choice, which you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Blip TV, Roku, YouTube, iTunes. I said iTunes. Yeah. So, uh... (laughs) You may have noticed, I am not Sorg. I am not Sorg. Indeed, I am Chachi, at Chachi Says. You can find me at ChachiPlays.com. Please give me your money. Joining me this week on this very special edition of the Mayhem Show is Papa Lunchbox. And he's all dressed up, sir. How are you and why are you dressed up? I am fantastic, and I'm dressed up because it's one of the greatest days of the year. That's right, folks. It's time for the much ballyhooed May Hemis. We're going to be giving out awards, not all night, but after all the segments, and then around the towards the end, we're going to reveal some of the some of the winners, uh, all the winners, and it's going to be fantastic. That's why I'm dressed up, wearing a wearing a tie, which I didn't even wear to work today. You guys are more special to me than work. So, uh, so yeah, I'm excited. Let's, let's fucking do this. Also joining us this week is the WrestleFan, the guardian and ruiner of the Mayhemi Awards. <laughs> How are you this evening, sir? Uh, I'm okay. Uh, Ch- Ch- Chachi, what did you do with Sorg? Uh, Sorg is sick. He, uh, you didn't. You, you're not trying to off him, so you can get you know sort of a, a better chance at this year's Mayhemies. No, um, as good of an idea as that is, uh, there's one show that I don't like to run. <laughs> um, I can run the Awesome Cast. I can run any other show we do. However, I cannot run the Mayhem show. So we are going to try to get through this as painless as possible. And make sure that it goes off without a hitch. Yeah, let's do that. It's, it's yeah! Really- yeah! Look at that. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> what the hell just happened? Okay. I moved my chair. Okay, good. Because that made a very loud noise. Oh, well. Uh, but yeah, it's the Mayhemies, and I'm excited. I got a suit jacket and a tie over a t-shirt, and it's a, <laughs> it's a zip-up tie. What up, motherfuckers? Oh, it's time. Man. And also joining us is Riz... They make such a thing as a zip-on tie. You've never seen zip-up ties? No, I've seen clip-on. No. no. Where do they zip? Look, it's a zipper. <laughs> huh. You like that audio, listeners, huh? That is amazing. <sighs> you have no life, sir. Wow. <laughs> I don't. I had to put together you... these mayhem poles. They clearly don't have a life. Okay. But yeah, it's the mayhemies. It is the mayhemies. It's the mayhemies. I'm probably no, I'm not drunk at all yet. Yet, you should have been. You should have been. I might. I still got confidence. You should have been pre-gaming, you piece of shit. Yeah, you piece of shit. Wait, yeah. why are we? Why are Wait, we why am, him? I, why am I being called? It doesn't shit? matter. You are listening to the wrestling shit mayhem. The, the, <laughs> the wrestling this, shit. You are listening to this show. <laughs> we. You can email we are us. Listening to the you wrestling can email us. Shit show at good times. At good times good at wrestling. Times. Good times at wrestling mayhem show dot com. You can call us. We like your drunk messages. We like your sober messages. We like your mouthful weird messages. <laughs> I didn't have anywhere I was going with that. (laughs) Anyhow, you can call us on the Mayhem Show Express line, 412-206-WMS0. That's 9670 for your radio... Radio. <laughs> radio. radio Our radio dial. Radio Rodeo. And... We should have a Mayhem Show. If you like us, you can buy our app 
$1.99 connects you directly to the action and gives you the show and a little bit more on your handy dandy mobile device. And there's even a, a hot link to call us and leave us a voicemail. It's the Mayhem Show app. It's available on your iOS and Android devices for your entertainment needs. And sometimes, if you're lucky, Papa Lunchbox will whip it out. Every now and then, once sometimes? in a blue yeah. moon, or a white moon, or a red moon, <laughs> because I am terrestrially <laughs> patriotic. <laughs> and so basically, any moon, you whip it out. Yes. I, beige moon, I'm not on board. Beige moon, beige just moon? What's wrong with the beige moon? Just the balls. It just gets. It's just the ball. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So go listen to WS Gold to learn more about uh, BJ Lunchbox's moon uh, dick showing uh, agenda. I'm like a werewolf, but with my testicles. Wow. <laughs> T-shirt. That, <laughs> <laughs> that 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 is that is a T-shirt here at the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We are a big fan of, well, our fans. Yeah. And yep, we, guys. we take, we take a, a bit of time out each week, and we read the mails that comes in. Emails. That's true. And, and voicemails. And voicemails. Do we have voice? We do have voicemail, there, but that's for later. A, at least one voicemail. Yes, and that is for later. Yes. Uh, who wants the first? Uh, actually, you know what? I will take the liberty of reading the first email um, because it was the only email I read this week and it made me laugh. <laughs> uh, greeting Mayhemers. There is a new wait, boss. Wait, in- whoa, 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 whoa. What? There's backstory. There, there is backstory. Okay. I don't think we need to go into the backstory punch box. No? No. I don't, I don't, I don't no. Like do, you think, do you think it's, it's self explanatory Mandatory this email? No, uh, go ahead. Talk. Go, get yeah, to the backstory. Go into the backstory. Okay. Well, we had that. We we had our uh, Mayhem Show Royal Rumble poll, just like we did last year. Uh, God damn, winner right gets back. bragging rights, and everybody <laughs> donates to Chachi Plays. So we're down there at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, and uh, everybody got their numbers and put in their. <laughs> Entire thing. She got John Cena, uh, as well as a, a couple other wrestlers, and uh, as y'all know, John Cena won the Royal Rumble. So, considering that, uh, what you get for this is bragging rights. Uh, she took that to heart, and she sent in this email uh, doing just that. Greeting Mayhemers. There's a new boss in town, and she is a lady. Lady Lunchbox, to be exact, just one year after my very first WWE pay-per-view, the last Royal Rumble, where the wonderful and talented DJ Lunchbox rode the pale horse Seamus to Vic. With the excellent picks of Chris Jericho, John Cena, and the less-than-stellar Zack Ryder. I begrudgingly cheered John Cena to victory. Wade Barrett was sadly not on the Lady Lunchbox team this year. Sad face. Seeing as the victory comes with very real bragging rights, I wholeheartedly invite each and every one of you to suck it. Your (laughs) paltry skills cannot approach the glory that is my ever so flawless victory. Fear not, my friends. I will be a fair and just ruler descending a month or so to remind you of my majesty and bask in the glow of whatever tribute that you choose to bestow on me. Just kidding, folks. Seeing the pay-per-view with the Mayhem crew was a blast, and any and all tribute can be donated directly to Chachi Plays. Here's to a lengthy John Cena title run and a longer feud with The Rock. I just threw up in my mouth a little. Suck it, you crap monkeys. Lady Lunchbox. Nah, I get... Goddamn Ryback. We're so close. Yeah. So close. Well, you know. So close. Just a tip. (laughs) Just Just a tip. tip. (laughs) Just a tip. Just a tip. (sighs) Uh, So, uh... Who's got the next one? I'll take the next one. All right, which one are you doing? I do not read... We're not reading big PPCs until uh, later. 
Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, in that case, I'll read Alexander Cars' is. Okay. <laughs> and presenters, Alex K. here with another look at major goings on in the week of wrestling. The Royal Rumble is really good, even if it is leading up to a Roxena rematch none of us wants to see. Somewhere in Mexico, El Gran Azul is rejoicing over the fact Alberto Del Rio is the, quote, Mexican Bret Hart. I say, if ADR is Bret Hart, I want Mysterio to be the Shawn Michaels. No one will ever see it coming. Speaking of not see it coming, seeing it coming, how about that Chris Jericho guy at number two in the Rumble? I was with what he marked out for it. It was awesome. Not the Miz kind of awesome, the real kind. Monday Night Raw existed i didn't bother watching it as usual <laughs> that's why i do the google hangout with you guys so i don't have to actually sit through all that mess myself Ugh. tensai and lingerie double Ugh. that's why i enjoy when indie wrestling signed alex k or if you're riz westel fan <laughs> westel fan westel fan yeah. westel fan wrap it down all right, Russell Speaking of Turco Jerks, it's time to read the Mexican email. It's Souther fan. <laughs> Souther fan. Uh, okay, let's do this. Hola, amigos. Es mi. Es mi. Es el gran azul. Alberto del Rio es el mexicano Bret Hart. Y estoy literalmente derramando lagram, lagrimas. Dera, de derramando. Al... Dera, dera. Roll your tongue! Roll it! <laughs> that's rolling. That's, that's not, not, that's that's not how you roll that's your tongue. flapping it. De, de, de la mando. That's me. Go on. De la mando. Lagrimas del agria por mi pueblo. Ole! Oh. Ole! <laughs> <laughs> El rumbo fue bueno, pero podría haber sido mejor con sin cada ganadora. Tenías que ser eh, elegido sin cara. Aparte de eso, Pipa Vitu y no puedo esperar a Mania 29. Monday Night Raw fue una completa pérdida de tiempo por otra parte. Tensa en ropa interior? Como diría Darren Young, no es el momento nadie se para eso. Olé! 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 Oh, hey. damn it. I'm sorry, I'm having problems with getting the volume right. No problem. It's, it's a, it's, it's, we hate the card, too. Uh, other than that, it was an excellent pay-per-view, and I can't wait for WrestleMania 29. Monday Night Raw was a complete waste of time. On the other hand, Tensai and lingerie? As Darren Young would say, ain't nobody got time for that. Ole! Ole! This is El Gran Azul, reminding you that every rose has its thorn, and mine is Sinkara not winning a world title. Ole! Yeah. 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 Can I just say you're Mexican for being in Texas is quite horrible. Yeah, man. You don't even know how to roll your tongue, as I like to point out every week. Okay, everyone else is super loud except for WrestleFan. Yeah, Good. WrestleFan's super quiet. Good. <laughs> Good. He needs to be quiet. <laughs> No, sorry, I can't hear Russell fan anymore. Yeah, he was just—he was getting quieter and quieter. Yeah, he was. Oh, now you are. Ole! Ole! <laughs> Ole! <laughs> Wait, hold on. Russell fan, talk. Ole! Talk. Ole! Talk again. Hello. Okay, that's ah. better. Hey, 
There's yeah. Russell Fan. Russell Fan. you guys. Riz, are you going to read the Bobby 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 mail? Oh, uh, sure. Why not? Yeah, four buy. emails, and you get the fourth <laughs> one, and there's four of us. Let's do it. Yeah. Why not? To whom it may concern. My uncle won the lottery in Zimbabwe. He needs someone to forward him one billion dollars in order to unlock the money. He will share forty-five cents. Forty-five cents with you once the one billion dollars is forwarded to his Swiss bank account. Wait. Speaking of Swiss. Speaking on Swiss. <laughs> yeah, it says speaking on Swiss. Antonio Cesaro. I think Dolph. he's talking about the cheese. Oh, uh, maybe. Or, or chocolate. Yes. Antonio Cesaro, Dolph Ziggler, Damian Sandow, Wade Barrett, and Cody Rhodes all lost this week on Raw. But one man shined, one man shined in the Rumble. My pick at number one, Dolph Ziggler. He didn't win, though. Also, the best part of the Rumble was my dad, who, who was in attendance at BWW, received Drew McIntyre. Followed by Heath Slater, but failed to get the 3MB trifecta. There's always next year. Raw was terrible, up till the last match and the ending. Oh well, there's always next week. I leave you with this. HTTP dot dot slash slash Instagram dot com. Did you just say dot? Did you say dot dot instead of colon? P, I don't care. Fuck you, you slash can't even roll your R's. <laughs> slash P slash capital V capital F capital uh, lowercase P capital V it's capital B V is in, as in hold on uh, stop uh, I'm gonna load whatever it is he sent us okay V is in oh, vicious it's can, an I know that he the whole, can I say uh, for the note the fact that yep, uh, and not yeah. How his dad didn't get all the three man band trifecta and that there was always yeah. next year. That's implying that the three man band's gonna be around next year. They will. Hall of Fame ass of 2013 inductee. <laughs> uh, yeah. Trish Stratus for our get audio it? listeners. She is a nice ass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Here's a question Who else would go in the ass Hall of Fame? The ass Hall of Fame? Billy yeah. Gunn. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Oh, uh, fucking, uh, mm, Stace Keebler, a bunch. Oh, yeah. Rikishi. Rikishi, yeah. Yokozuna. Yokozuna. Naked Midian. Yeah, naked, naked Midian. Who's, oh, uh, Ahmed Johnson had a ghetto booty. Yeah, he did. Who else? Mm -hmm. I just want Les Bucks to say ghetto booty again. Say it. Ghetto booty. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Sean, no, 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 no. I was going to say something, but no. For 30 days. Because right. Lunchbox might actually jump through the computer and try to kill me if I say that name. Okay, what so name? What since. Is, what is it? Meat. <sighs> Meat's got a pretty nice ass, I gotta admit. Get out of here. <laughs> He's got a meat ass. Okay. Fucking goddamn Sean Stasiak. All right, stop. Hold on. We got to go on with the show. Now, <laughs> Wrestle Fan. Yes. Do you do the Indie Minute before we show the interview? No, After... there's voicemail. Oh, yeah. There is a voicemail, too. I thought the voicemail was happening during the awards. Oh, you're right. It is happening. No, oh, there's look. a different voicemail. No, there's not. <laughs> there's a. Is, isn't there another email from... Another voicemail from uh, somebody here. I thought that no, I thought there was a voicemail from a new caller. Oh new yeah, caller. the new caller. Yeah. I don't know. Oh uh, yes. know <laughs> Yes. No. <laughs> That's sad because not... Chachi's the one who needs to know what we're talking about so he can play it. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, go ahead it's un- I, Lunchbox. You no. you you gave him your phone, didn't you? I did. I said, here, you use the phone. It's already, you, I heard you, you said it was already dialing. It's already dialing. I handed it to them. I found them. It's complicated. Oh, I wait, so you, are you talking about this per, a person that's sort of like not technically sound? I don't really know their name. 
Hold on. <laughs> All I know is they're a fan of the show. And, and we're they were, fans and they, of them. They really, they really, really wanted to talk to uh, uh, talk to everybody on the show. So I said, "Here, I'll just go through this convenient dollar ninety nine Wrestling Mayhem show app <laughs> to get the phone number to call the show." And uh, okay, wait, and is, it, is this the one that came in earlier today? Uh, no, this one came in like just a few minutes ago, maybe like yeah. half an hour. Yeah, that that save that saving for later. Uh, is it? Yeah, hold it on. is. Wait, hold on. No, I found it. Oh, why, is, why would you save that for later? All right, we have a voicemail. <laughs> We're going to the voicemail. Hello, Rambo Mayhem under show. I am going to speak about the men rubbing wrestling. Some of a cookie man. I am coming from the deeper underground portions of what could be considered your brain section. I have Zip off pants that I bought from a dead hope. Did not appreciate what I gave him. <coughs> I do not really appreciate how to be hopeless. I am going to speak to you about the abilities of the Pittsburgh Bungalow section of America. Thank you for America, Pittsburgh Bungalow Section, wrestling me in. Where did you find this guy? You... Where's the Pittsburgh the... Bungalow Section? You don't want to know where that is, Russell fan. I'm so it... confused. I... <laughs> How does he know so much about Pittsburgh? <laughs> oh, <sorry. That> is... <coughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, were you uh, there when he was t- saying all this? Yeah, but I was doing my laundry. <laughs> I have no idea what the hell is going on. What is I that? I don't know. He was living. I Okay. So when I got home from work, I've got like no clean clothes except what I'm wearing. So I grab a bunch of stuff and I go down in the basement and I start doing my laundry and doing my taxes on my laptop. And then this fucking guy shows up. <laughs> and, and He just <laughs> shows up at your house. You know, in my basement, in my basement. In, in I, don't basement. Know, I don't know how they got there. They seem nice enough, though, and they seem to be a fan of the show. Uh, so, so here we are. <laughs> wow. wow. All right, so that's all the uh, fan interaction, right? For now. Yeah. Okay, now, Wrestle fan. When you do, uh, when you have interviews, do you do it before? Oh, it's let's, not. I, I can't even show you. Let's do it. Let, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it before because it'll be a nice little lead-in. Uh, for those uh, listeners of the Wrestling Mayhem show, our good friends at Sorgatron Media were in attendance for IWC's big event this past weekend, and they were ab- able to have a very nice interview with uh, a new friend of the show, Aiden Vale uh, of the IWC Wrestling roster, uh, on location at the event. Uh, so I believe Chachi uh, has that for us to sort of play up and. Yeah, let's hear from uh, Aiden Vale, IWC Superstar. Hey guys, it's Sorg here with the Wrestling Mayhem Show again on location, this time before IWC Payback, right here, kind of down the road, uh, down the road from last week in Elizabeth, PA. I'm here with Aiden Vale, who's been rocking it here in IWC. How you doing? I'm doing good, bro. How are you? All right. All right. Now we're coming to you from the merch booth, again, pre-show. What do you got out here? What do we got? Some, uh, got some Aiden Vale t-shirts here. Entertaining since 92. That's uh, the year I was born. Right out of the room. Very entertaining. Got my drum set right there with a nice uh, nice logo on the front. 
pick you up one. I saw you. Now, you came to the IWC. I, I've seen here. You've been up in Prime Wrestling, of course, sure. uh, a few other places. Yeah. Um, and, and you come out You come out with drumsticks. I do. I'm a drummer. You're a drummer. This is legit. This is legitimate, yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, the first question we've always had was, why did he never team with Logan Shulo with his mic stand? I don't know, man. We've just, uh, we've never, we've, we've never had the opportunity to get together and make something happen, but maybe down the road. You guys could have been the 3MB. <laughs> we could be. Drew McIntyre does look a lot like me. You, you know what I mean? I think he's, uh, I think he's been watching my stuff. What do you think? A little bit, little a little bit. bit. I, he does better at the Scottish thing now. So, <laughs> um, anyways, no, you, know, you, 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 you and, uh, and and somebody else here that's at IWC now have been mentioned on the show several times in the past. Okay. Uh, as the people that watch the show, listen to the show, know, uh, I was a huge fan of the Pocket Rockets. <laughs> the pocket rockets, yeah. We made some noise, but uh, you know, then we we went different paths. You know, he chose one way, I chose the other. You just, I don't know. Okay. And you wound up here, and it's like your paths are crossing yet again. It is. They are. Yep. But this time we're not, you know, on the same track. So. Now, last, um, I think, couple shows, or maybe this is the second show. You're you're now in a new tag team. Right. That's right. We are rock stars. War. And it's uh, me and Jordan Lennox. He's, he's a good dude. He's, uh, he's from upstate New York. And, uh, you know, we're looking to make some pretty big things happen. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so, so we do, you know, we do. One thing I know about you is you're a big John Cena fan. <laughs> That's true. I love John Cena. I don't even care. I'll tell everybody. <laughs> That's I know. I, I'm very aware that you tell everybody. <laughs> That's my man. I don't even care. Like I said, that's all I got to say. <laughs> you, I, now, I saw you sitting up there. I saw you sitting up there at, at that last WWE show that was in town. Did you Did you have another moment with John Cena? You know what? Which one are you talking about? Which, which, the very last time they were in town? The last time for that huge super show with the Christmas okay, stuff yeah. and everything. You see, he was nice enough to stand on the apron of where he was and take a picture with me way back here on the other side of the audience. So, no, he was just standing in the back of the frame. But, yeah. Um, I, did I ever tell you the story when I met him when I was in sixth grade? This is what I was leading up to. Now, now, now I think this is the one you've told me before. Um, tell, so tell me about how you met John Cena. I met John Cena at a press conference here at, uh, it was the Civic Arena then, Mellon Arena, I guess. But uh, No Way Out was the pay-per-view that was going to be in town. And they did a press conference, like I said. And uh, like the way I was sitting at, at the end of the table, he was, like, uh, he was on that side, actually. And I was just standing like in front of him, you know, maybe like 15 feet away. And then, uh, you know, I was just trying to get his attention the whole time. And I was just like, Cena, Cena, dude, you know. And he finally looked, and I was just like, Cena. And he was just like. And you were how old at this time? Uh, I was maybe like 12. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. It was a pretty great day. That's Probably the best day of my life to this day. Nice, nice. <laughs> now, uh, we did we did pull the uh, Mayhemers uh, for some questions and stuff. We got some weird ones this time. Uh, I know, I believe it was Alexander Cars out from out in California uh, did have a question. So, I don't know, maybe this is a hot debate. Uh, it was a hot debate all over the country now. So, uh, we, we'll, you know, tell us right now here, uh, go on record with the Mayhem Show, what is your stance on uh, gun control? My stance on gun control? Um, they want to know, you know. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't think anybody can control these guns. <laughs> what do you think of that one? <laughs> right off the head. How you doing? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> All right, let's bring him back to wrestling. Okay. Oh man. All right, you're here in IWC. You've had a, a chance. You've had a chance. Um, one thing I know is right off the bat, you 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 got a chance to get in the ring with some pretty big people uh, here in the industry. Uh, I know uh, Chuck Taylor is the one name that comes out. I mean, you you you've had a chance to, to get in there with some pretty big names. Uh, and and of course you're around doing other, other stuff. You know, what, what's kind of uh, your highlight so far in your young career? Um, I would say the highlight, I would have to say, uh, would be Super Indie when I was with Chuck Taylor because, I mean, as a fan growing up watching IWC, that was like my favorite event. You know, I've always wanted to be in that tournament and I finally got to live that out. It sucks I got eliminated in the first round, but, you know, this one's coming up again yeah. this year, so, yeah. yeah. Another chance to get to show up to the dance, right? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> All right, let's uh, uh, real quick. We, you hear the rings uh, going. Everybody's setting up. People yeah. are starting to fill in a little bit. So we got the one last question, the big question that we've been asking all the Mayhemers, uh, straight from AJ here, uh, 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 for the past year. So we want to know, Aiden Vale, if you were a vegetable, what vegetable would you be? I would be the best looking vegetable, par none. Which one? That one. <laughs> I'm a big fan of broccoli. We'll put it that way. Okay. 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 For no reason other than that. It's got a good head of hair on it. It does, just like me. 
<laughs> Rock and Broccoli, Aiden Vale. Thank you very much. Again, where can people find you uh, coming up online, anything like that? Uh, you can find me all over the place. If there's a show, typically on the East Coast, you know, I'm trying to get wherever I can go. Rocking crowds anywhere, you know. Um, you can find me on Facebook at, or that's that'd be Twitter. Twitter at Aiden Vale. Facebook.com slash Aiden Vale. There you go. There you go. Go check them out. Thanks for joining us on the Mayhem Show. Thanks for having me. Now back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Sorg, for that great interview we had with uh, Aiden Vale. It was a pleasure uh, getting to talk to him, getting some uh, info out of him. Uh, but that's a good way to transition into this week's Indie Minute, this week in Amateur Falling Down, and this week in Untelevised Wrestling. Um, so, yeah, let's talk. First, let's start off with IWC. Uh, Sorgatron Media was in attendance for their big event this past weekend for IWC Payback uh, at the Court Time Sports Center in Elizabeth, Pennsylvania. Chachi was there. I was there. He was there. I was there, uh, ringside. So filming, uh, filming the stuff. Yeah, uh, So, Chachi, what would you think of the event? Uh, it was a really good show. Um, it went by really, really quick, honestly. Uh, normally, uh, the the first show of the year is usually pretty a, a pretty decent show, so I assumed that. Oh, where's it at? Here it is. Yes, the show was called Payback. Payback. Mm. Um, <coughs> and as the website, so it, it, it featured uh, John McChesney versus Michael Elgin. Um, it, that what, was a really. What did you match. think of Michael Elgin, Jachi? Uh, he gave McChesney a black eye. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Michael Logan. <laughs> um, and he looks like the type of person that you wouldn't want to screw over in the ring because mm. he would hurt you for real. Yep. Um, but he stayed in the ring, so I wasn't afraid. That's good. <laughs> I was not scared at all. Um, and then uh, Logan Shulo versus Anthony Nice for the, the Super Indie title match. This was probably uh, one of the top matches on the card um uh, from start to finish it was a fantastic match both these guys went balls to the wall and it was really good um and uh and i believe anthony nice was crowned the new super indie champion in that one yes he was uh due to some uh that it was a weird the the lights went out um for a good 30 seconds and then they came back on, and Logan Shulo was covered in red stuff all over his face, and uh, Anthony Nice picked up the win. Very cool. So, hmm. so it looks like just, was it just like red stuff, or was it blood, or was it like Kool Aid? I um, um, um <laughs> oh, I, w- I wish it was Kool Aid. I think we're supposed to believe it was blood. <laughs> um, uh, in my fantasy world, world it would be Kool Aid. Right, right, Is mine too. Um, oh, but yeah. no, it, it was a good, it was good match or a good show from top to finish. There wasn't a bad, bad match on the card. Um, Very cool. It was highly entertaining. So, I think, I think that's why it flew by. Definitely. Well, th- uh, that, that's awesome. And the next event they have is back at the Court Time Sports Center, March 9th. Uh, so that should be a really fun one. If you want more information on them, you can go to iwcwrestling.com. Check them out. Check our local friends in the Pittsburgh area. Yes, uh, the is, next uh, event. Or go ahead. WC on Civil War. On Civil War, and there's explosions and shit on the graphic. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Let's, go ahead. So go check. Definitely go check them out. Uh, the next event that I want to talk about here on the Indie Minute is uh, an event coming up this Friday, February first. If you are in the St. Louis area, our good friends at St. Louis Anarchy, which is the St. Louis affiliate for Anarchy Championship Wrestling, will be holding their big Gateway to Anarchy event in Alton, Illinois. It should be a really fun event, with the main event being tag team action as the Hooligans team up to take on the team of Davey Vega at ACH. Uh, also on that card, friend of the show Gary J goes one on one with the St. Louis Anarchy debut of Sammy Callahan. That should be another really fun one. Also, Jessica Havoc, uh, WSU uh, Women's Champion, makes her debut for St. Louis Anarchy, taking on Angelus Lane. That should be a really fun one. So, if you want more information on that, you can go to slawrestling.com. Like I mentioned, it's in Alton, Illinois, uh, February 1st, this Friday. So definitely go check them out. Go uh, see some great independent wrestling and go support a couple friends of the show that are doing some great stuff. Um, The next thing I want to talk about, if you are not uh, in the uh, Illinois area, if you're in the Indiana area, or if you uh, have a computer and you want to watch something on iPay-Per-View, $5 Wrestling's this weekend, guys. $5 Wrestling? $5 Wrestling straight out of Compton. We only do that with uh, National Wrestling Day. 
Wow. National Pro Wrestling Day. <laughs> oh, wait, wait for it. Uh, um, but no, uh, they're straight out of Compton. Oh, there's a freight train interview. Yeah. Freight train interview, getting prepared for his match uh, for $5 Wrestling this Friday uh, in Charlestown, Indiana. But like I mentioned, if you uh, want to check it out and you're not in the Charlestown area, you can go to $5wrestling.com and order the iPay-Per-View, which I checked. It is, I know there was some confusion. It is only $5. Oh, it so, is? It is, yeah. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, it's only five dollars. Uh, Colt Cabana and Marty DeRosa doing great stuff uh, over there with Five Dollar Wrestling. So I definitely encourage you to go check them out. Like I mentioned, it's Five Dollar Wrestling dot com. Straight out of Compton. Five Dollar Wrestling. Woo! Uh, this Friday, uh, so go check them out and go support some eh, not so great indie wrestling, but some really funny indie wrestling, uh, and and check them out. I don't and, know what your well, I don't know what your definition of not so great is because the, those the, guys if you ever watched five dollar wrestling it is some great shit the the one dude has like a gut that's like so like pronounced that big donnie like, donnie that's his name big donnie uh, big donnie uh, i think he's wrestling cliff compton if i'm not wrong former wwe tag team champion Dom, uh, domino uh so that should be fun uh, lot, yeah. So go check that out, five dollar wrestling dot com. And, and Chris kind of jumped the gun, but it's the important thing. The last thing I want to talk about: National Pro Wrestling Day is this weekend, guys. National, National Pro, Pro Wrestling, wrestling Day. Day. Pro wrestling Day is this National weekend. National Pro Wrestling Day. This holy weekend. fuck balls! Yeah, this weekend. Holy fuck balls. yeah. Uh, National Pro Wrestling Day in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's going to be a fun night. I definitely encourage anyone to check that out. To see some stars that you may know, see some stars that you probably don't know, and go check, you know, go support some great companies. A lot of big groups are on there: Ring of Honor, Chikara, Beyond Wrestling, uh, IWC Wrestling, our good friends there, AIW, uh, Anarchy Championship Wrestling. Uh, a lot of the Wrestling Is promotions are on there. Uh, it's going to be a fun big time. Battle. Kaiju Big Battles on there. Uh, a lot of a lot of really cool stuff. Okay, question for you. Yes. Because I often do not pay attention when you're talking about the indie wrestlings. Mm -hmm. I am looking at this list of companies okay. that are participating in National Pro Wrestling Day. National yes. Pro Wrestling Day. Okay. Now, I want you to tell me if the following are the same company. Okay. Uh, wrestling is awesome. Wrestling is fun. Yes. Wrestling is heart. Yes. Wrestling is art. Yes. Oh, that's it. That was the last one. And there's there's, also, I think wrestling, wrestling is, is respect. Is I don't respect think that is the other one. Is but it? no, oh, there they're, they're, yeah. they're sort of under the same grouping, the uh, Chikara grouping. But they're very, they're very different companies, from what I know. Huh. What about uh, what about my uh, small independent group? Uh, wrestling is slightly gay, but it's all right because we like it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't think that made the cut. <laughs> Fuck! Oh, I've been waiting by the mailbox, waiting for my. We only have two wrestlers. Mm. Uh, do they wear? One of, do they wear clothes? Did one of them send in a voicemail to the show this week? We wear as many clothes as the rest of uh, <laughs> wrestlers do. Are you sure? Just one wait, of them wait. a lot. Just a lot more lube. One of you, them has a wanna... thing that he bought off of a dead hobo. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, when he may... bought it off of a dead hobo? Didn't you listen to the voicemail? <laughs> <laughs> you may you may want to take that up with CZW Lunchbugs. They're also upset that they get made National Pro Wrestling Day. So yeah, I know you may you may have something going there. Um, yeah, but yeah. Well, so we've got we've got dead hobos, no National Pro Wrestling Day, and uh, pencil beds in common. Great, CZW, let's join up. Yeah, wow. let's do it. Um, so, like I mentioned, go to nationalprowrestlingday.com. It's in Philadelphia this uh, Saturday, uh, the second. Uh, there's an afternoon card that starts at 1 p.m. and an evening card that starts at 7 p.m. Uh, so, uh, from what I know, Sorgatron Media will be there. Sorg will be in attendance for that one at the IWC booth, so you can go say hi to him uh, and, and uh, show tell him you listen to the sure. Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, but if you are not going to with be... your mouth. Mm, I don't know if they'll like that there. I don't know if... Because it's kind of sponsored by Chikara. I don't know if they'll approve of that. But check, check okay, with them first. Check my, with them first. give a hand job yeah. with your mouth. Um, but if you, <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow! If you can't make it to Philadelphia, uh, wow. you can also order this on iPayPerView at uh, smvod.com, which is smartmarkvideoondemand.com. 
um, where you can get both uh, the afternoon and the evening card for only $15. If you want only the afternoon or only the evening, it's $9. Uh, and that also includes um, uh, unlimited uh, watching of the event after the uh, event is live. So uh, definitely go check that out at smvod.com, nationalprowrestlingday.com. And go visit National Pro Wrestling Day. Go support those guys because – you know, it's a mix of some of the you know top talent in the U.S. and also a lot of young talent, you know, a lot of up and coming. And who that, who's know. there? Russell fan? Hmm. Who's there that you know? Who's there? Now? There's a couple Texas guys there. Like, like, be- who, who's that one name that keeps on popping up? Oh, is it the one? Is it the one with the three initials that I really yes. like? And, and apparently, I have a boner for. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. ACH will be there. That'll be that'll be fun stuff. But I'll, I mean, you know. You got Ring of Honor, Chikara representation, all the wrestling is fun groups, uh, IWC wrestling, uh, you know, women superstars and censored. If you haven't seen any of that, you know, there's a lot of variety and there's a lot of names that I'm sure not a lot of people have heard of. So check them out and see, you know, which groups you like, which ones you don't, and you know, just follow more groups. That's you know, that's what indie wrestling is all about. So I encourage you to check them out this Saturday, February second. And that, my friends, is the indie minute for this week. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, uh, the only reason I'm saying this is because I'm supposed to be leading the show. So don't get used to it, WrestleFan. I, I love it. Thank you, WrestleFan, for this week's Indie Minute. And uh, check out some gold. We will be right back. Riz, Riz, I'd like to point out the part go, that you're you naturally your playing. No, I know. You, <laughs> you were just like, I'll play the Predator part. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've got a good a competitive 401k. Uh, we uh, will match. We do, um, you know, vision, dental. We can't have, you know, our strippers with busted, fucked up teeth, especially on those stilts. I mean, that's going to be trouble. That's going to be trouble. For my as, uh, as his wrestling show family, we need filled in on the situation. You are my... This is just the things I do. Walk up and put some hoes in the sultry crew. Yeah, yeah. This is just the shit I do. Spit my beer on a bitch and grab another brew. Yeah, yeah. This is just the shit I've been into. See me in a whip, it's mine. Yo, I don't ride no rental. Yeah, yeah. This is just how it's done. Grinding and working hard, but just having fun. Yeah. Then I'm back. In the midst of the mayhem Quick, quick, this shit, this shit, this shit what I'm saying Not playing, not gaming, not delaying Go and cop my dick CD sales ain't paid for the watch That's on my wrist No shit, I've been hustling Been struggling Been doing what I do Just for the love of it I've been discussing it Y'all is disgusting this shit, And I can't believe these dudes wanna run with it So come in front this shit So come confront this bitch I know that y'all do not wanna fuck with this all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are back. We survived the break and recorded some oddly weird stuff for uh, Mayhem Show Gold. So you can go and buy the app, $1.99, at your respective stores. Um, however, now it's time for a little segment that we like to call... Remember when... And this week's Remember When is uh, brought to you by WrestleFan. Go ahead. Me. Ha ha. Um, so this has to do with uh, this past weekend. Uh, I, I spent some time with some good friends, including a uh, good Messing Mayhem show fan that's always in the chat room, Texas Anarchy. Uh, Saturday night, uh, we, you know, we sat down, we played, and we uh, got into some video games. Uh, and I played something that I had never played before. Um, and it could go down as possibly the greatest video game of all time, like in general, but, and, and, and stay with me on here. Um, we played, uh, a little game that's called Backyard Wrestling, if you ever remember, for the PS2. Oh, Um, I, I think this has to go down as like one of the most phenomenal games in the history of pro wrestling games. Um, think WCW Backstage Assault. You remember that game? Where there was no wrestling ring, you just fought in like weird areas of you know, you know you were in either a bathroom or you're in like a parking lot. Think about that. Slightly better graphics, 
slightly better controls, and it's a bunch of obscure wrestlers that, you, you know, the most, you know, hipster of indie wrestling fans would know about. Of course. Yeah. I, you know, you get to wrestle as, uh, what was it, Sanjay Dutt and, like, Ruckus. And, and hey, hey, Sanjay Dutt was in TNA for a little while. That's not too indie. Okay, but then you also have people like uh, New Jack and like Zandig for you CZW fans out there. Um, it's probably like the most fucked up video game ever. And I remember being like a little Wrestle fan when the game first came out, and <laughs> I was not allowed to even like touch it. Like, I got, my parents <laughs> refused for me to even come close to getting that video game. Uh, so. Playing it, you know, 10, 15 years later, I gotta say I was impressed. I was very impressed, you know. Uh, there's also, also I, I think this is a key aspect. You, some of the characters, you can play as four female characters, which are some of the, I gotta say, classiest, classiest broads you'll ever see. Um, uh, a lot of, you know, our, our, our female listening base just left because you called them broads. Yep. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, th- I think they should check out these characters and see uh, and see what I'm talking about. And you know how sort of you have um, you have like a catchphrase that you say beforehand before you start to fight, sort of thing. Um, one of the characters whose name is Adrian Payne, uh, who's wearing a beautiful like mesh thing with pasties. Um, her catchphrase is uh, just her saying the word butt plug. <laughs> Not even like you're a butt plug or I'm going to butt plug you. Just the word butt plug. <laughs> and okay, I, I can this, see this. And I think this has to go down as the greatest video game of all time. I mean, I, I don't see any competitors, okay? No one is to that level that is backyard wrestling. So that's my remember win. What, what other obscure pro wrestling video games do you guys enjoy? Uh, can, I, can I just add something? Go for it. Actually, I want to talk to Chachi for a minute. Go for it. Chachi, what, what, what is he talking about? Uh, as far as what goes. Um, Did you just call Backyard Wrestling the greatest video game ever? This yeah. is, uh, you're talking about a child that has uh, in his possession six video games tops. And this is why he's not where we are in the video game realm. Right. You guys need to play it. I swear to God. It was I have played wrestling. Backyard Wrestling. wrestling. We've played I have played backyard. backyard Wrestling 2. Yeah. They're over. Actually, hold on. You guys keep talking. I'll be right back. And the, the thought of that being a good game over such great fighting slash wrestling games as my pick Def Jam Vendetta. That's With, a good one. Oh my okay. god, that game is incredible! DMX. Funk Master Flex. Ghost <laughs> Face Killer. Seth so, Rollins! But Seth Rollins? Seth Rollins? Seth Rollins, man! He was your fucking trainer in that game. Oh yeah! No, no, no I'm sorry. I, you're talking about Vendetta. I'm talking about, I think it was Fight for New York. Yeah, something like that, but Method yeah. Man was in here. Ludacris. Mm-hmm. Snoop Dogg. S- Snoop. Yeah. Never mind. But still, but still, you're saying Backyard Wrestling was better than Def Jam Vendetta. I I, I gotta say, Def Jam is a close is a close con you know uh, no, a close competitor. Oh no, no, it's uh, not. Okay, first off, every game that's being mentioned right now. It should not even be in the conversation of best video game ever. Oh no, no, no! no. I'm just, t- I'm just explaining to Wrestle Fan that there are more obscure fighting games than backyard wrestling. Also, such yeah. as other than De- other than Def Jam Vendetta, such as Clay Fighter. Clay Fighter, yes. Um, also- Street Fighter. Uh, okay, Street Fighter's not even okay. You can't compare Street Fighter to backyard wrestling. Those are two different aspects. I mean, come on. Okay. You can't compare Clay yeah. Fighter to but Street still, it's Fighter better or it, backyard wrestling. It is better. Uh, anyhow, back back to remember when uh, mine would have to be WWE arc the arcade. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that game was just weird and <clears throat> highly ridiculous for a wrestling game. Lunchbox? Um, I, I'm trying to find, I'm currently trying to find the roster of the game that I want to talk about. Uh, it's a, it was a PS1 game uh, released in, uh, ooh, what does that mean? Uh, European markets. December 1997. Uh, WCW versus the world. Um, oh. I, I don't want to, I don't want to call it the greatest what what is the what are we calling these the greatest obscure the greatest game? like wrestling type no, game it, it's the greatest obscure wrestling game okay so no WWE games I guess because I've played a lot of uh, well, Rise or for the Sega Genesis oh but, well, um, Mike, well, Mike the anyway mentioning Crush Hour Crush Hour is pretty obscure. Anyway, uh, WCW versus the world. I wish I could remember more of the roster because it had uh, 51 wrestlers. Um, it had the WCW NWO roster and then, uh, I guess, quote, fictional foreign wrestlers. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were renamed counterparts of real-life Japanese wrestlers that could not be properly represented in the game's American version due to copyright restrictions. Um, and it's it's driving me nuts because I can't find a roster list. And I remember there was, like, some... There was, like, like AK... A it was, like, AKI Man and... Oh man, there were so many of those guys. I forget. Yeah. There was one that was like dressed up as Frankenstein, I think, or something like that. Yeah, and there was like some like like actually really like wasn't like Hayabusa in it or and yeah. thing. Oh, it's it's making me crazy that I can't find the fucking uh roster list here. But uh but that's that's definitely mine, uh, as far as weird obscure games go. WCW versus the world. Alright, and from the from the chat room, we have uh, Crush Hour um, and Ma or Texas Anarchy telling WrestleFan to shut up and play a man's game like Shaq Fu. Um, uh, and uh, Bobby FJ Town Fu. said, Power Move Pro Wrestling on PS1. That's a good one. So there you go. That is the uh, this week's Remember When. Uh, let me hold this up because it is... Time for this week's Mad Mike Minutes of Mayhem. <coughs> Greetings, Mayhemers. It's Mad Mike once again with your Minute of Mayhem. Now, I couldn't dress up all fancy, so I grabbed every tie that I own here, and it's fancy tie day. So, um,. Yeah, happy Mayhemies, everyone. I'm sorry, I feel like shit uh, under the weather. I believe it's because um, WWE gave me predictabilityitis. Um, I, I got it Sunday night. I'm pretty sure it's because of the Rumble. And, you know, we're going to see Rock, Austin, uh, Rock um, Cena and Mania again. I hope Punk gets in there. I don't know if he will. But I hope he does. And then we saw Brock Lesnar return again for another predictable thing to see. Brock and Triple H, which I don't really want to see. I'd rather see a triple threat match with Punk, Cena, and Rock, and Lesnar versus Taker. But, you know, that's too creative. Um... But anyway, Raw last night was just fucking horrible. I mean, did anyone else think that? I I was actually able to watch it live. I was working from home because I wasn't feeling that well. And I felt cheated. Like, if I had watched this on DVR, I would have fast-forwarded to, like, 60 to 70% of the show at least. But, I mean, at least Jericho's back... Jericho's back being good. Uh, if we get a Jericho Ziggler World Title match at Mania, that'd be amazing. Um, TNA has a better show this week. How's that happen? Huh? I don't know. Um, but I will say this I saw the spoilers for what TNA is doing. I have to say, I'm not going to spoil it for any of you guys. So I know y'all have your picadillos about that shit. 
but after it happens, I'm actually kind of intrigued, and if they do what in my head I would do, because they're setting it up, I may have to review it again, because then that'll be interesting to me. And, uh, yeah, but TNA wasn't horrible this week. I mean, I mean you know, it, it, it was, but it wasn't. It was better than Raw, which Raw was just bad. But, um, yeah, Trish Stratus in the Hall of Fame, guys. Trish fucking Stratus. I'm very excited about that, especially because I'll get to see her live and somewhat in person, depending on what you consider Madison Square Garden seating to be. Um... But yeah, I, I'm, I don't know who else is going to go in the Hall of Fame, though. I heard rumors that they're going to induct the Click, which I think that could be kind of cool. Uh, the Click being in the Hall of Fame, they, they accounted for the start of DX and the start of the NWO. If that's not Hall of Fame worthy, I don't know what is, because I think that's the only way you're going to get Scott Hall or Xbox in there. All right, well, uh, that's Mad Mike for the minute this week, bitches. And, um, if I did win a Mayhemi, I'd like to thank all the little people I stepped on to get there. If I didn't, I'm going to find every one of you fuckers that didn't vote for me. And probably cough on you or something to get you sick, you know. But yeah, that's the minute this week, bitches. Peace. Comments from the unwashed masses. First, uh, Bobby starts with a link. So let me load that. Oh, yes, I also submitted this to the show. Uh, it is a YouTube video of a freakout uh, over the reaction, or a freakout reaction over the results of uh, the CM Punk Rock match. And it's highly entertaining. That's two now. Here comes the belt throw. So he just waves from the people's elbow. Michael! Sweet so you there, belt bro. Get the fuck out! Get the f- Get out! Don't be so mean! Get out! <laughs> Don't fucking film in here! Bridget, please get out! No, we need- You're laughing at me and I'm getting pissed the fuck off about it! Yeah, you tell those DVDs. Where's that? Who's the rock at in this fucking thing? That's what I think about you, Rock. That's what I think, about, that's what I think about you, Rocky. <laughs> Get out. Seriously, please. 400 days thrown away for the fucking... So we can promote another fucking movie until WrestleMania. And then uh, also from Bobby to finish the segment, uh, if you don't remember, this is comments from WDB's uh, Facebook page. Real comments from real people. There's nothing wrong with Zack Ryder, who Zack spelled Z-A-K. He is just on a planned downward spiral. If I were you, I'd ask them to take Dolph Ziggler off the air because he's repulsive and get rid of Vicky. But hey, who am I to talk? LOL. Yeah, who are you? I about? agree. <laughs> A planned the are downward you? spiral? Yeah, that's what it says. Planned downward spiral. All right. <laughs> And uh, I don't know if that's so odd. I feel like they're putting like Tensai on a planned downward spiral the way it's looking. There's no such thing as a planned di- downward spiral. I no. Yeah, they didn't plan to put him in lingerie last night. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, putting him in lingerie is a is a planned uh, 
planned thing. He was on the show. Putting him in lingerie was a planned erection for DJ Lunchbox. That's what that was. <laughs> and it succeeded. Also, Plan accomplished. Also in the uh, this segment, oh well, the storyline can't be about CM Punk forever. I was getting bored. Finally a new storyline. <laughs> and the last one, no more PG old school. It's school without the L. Rocks bring back hardcore days. <laughs> yeah, rocks bring back those hardcore yeah. days. So this yeah. is this has been <laughs> another uh, another installment of comments from the unwashed masses. Texas Anarchy in the chat room says I did the same thing when Jinder Mahal got eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> and now the moment of every or the moment everyone has been waiting for. It is the most anticipated moment of the Wrestling Mayhem Show year. And for it, I send it over to WrestleFan. Hey! In case you wondered why I'm in a suit jacket and in a fancy tie, it's because it's Mayhemmy's night! Yeah, we, t- we told them that in the beginning. We didn't yeah, have why, wondering. Why are we... Nobody's yeah, wondering. Riz, are you take, so progressively taking clothes off throughout the evening? It looks like you're topless. No, he's he's been like that the whole time. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I've been topless the whole time. Well, you need to take your shirt off right now. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's start it off. Uh, you guys voted, and you guys voted a lot. Uh, a lot of big turnout uh, with votes here for this year's Mayhem. He's uh, very awesome stuff. Uh, let's start it off with uh, one of the big awards that we have every year. Uh, it's our Interview of the Year Award. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's excited. Woo! Yeah, it's the time that you go woo. Yeah, uh, interview. Don't we have uh, theme music that you guys normally hum? Ba, 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 ba. No. no. No, you're doing good, Riz. Go no, on. no. Screw you guys. You're not doing it. All right, fine. <laughs> Russell fan, this year's nominees, if you will. Okay, let's run through. Not all of them. Just name a few, and we'll we'll get to. Just the name the top. The okay, top so, get, uh, get. Uh, yeah, 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 that's a good one. Uh, we did have a couple. Uh, our second runner is up for uh, the interview of the year. Well, it's actually a tie between uh, our interview back from WMS uh, three thirty six with Jock Sampson. That was a fun one. That was a fun one. <laughs> that was a fun one. That was actually tied. In votes with our interview that we had earlier in the year at WS three ten with Jimmy DeMarco and Chess Flexor. Yeah, that's all. That's always a fun one, um, and, and a lot of a lot of spacing out. A lot of people like there's very few categories that didn't get a, at least some votes. So it's, it's it, that was very cool to see. Um, and then our runner up uh, award with eleven uh, percent of the vote. Uh, for uh, the interview of the year was so the interview we had on WMS 321 with Rachel Summerlin from the Texas area. That was another really fun one. It's because um, she has boobs. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, I, you know, I don't blame our listeners. You know, whatever. I, I'm, uh, not, I'm not saying it was the wrong choice. I'm just saying that's that's why. That no, well, and we, and we had a good discussion. I thought we had a good discussion. I, about, I said know, she was too. funny. She was the first person we asked the the, vest- the infamous vegetable question. It is. So yes. it's an, it was a monumental moment. It was. But the winner. Who was the winner, Wrestle Fan? Uh, of the year with 44% of the vote. 44%! That's almost 45%. Yeah, almost is. From WMS 339, our interview with Max Zaleski from the Wrestling with Subtitles group. Yay! Yay! And we actually have a response from Max. We do, which I will get to right now if I can pull it up. I got it. Get... I got it. You got it? Yeah. Hello, okay. wrestling fans. It's Max Zaleski from Wrestling with Subtitles. I'd like to thank you all for voting me in as interview of the year, Mayhemi. You'll be happy to know that we reached 1,500 signatures on the, posi- on the petition last night during Raw. Thanks to you and everyone else who has helped this project grow. I look forward to coming back on your show when subtitles are on wrestling DVDs. Thanks again, Max Zaleski, Wrestling with Subtitles. Very cool. Yay! Go check him out. Uh, At Wrestle Subtitle, I believe, is the Twitter uh, handle. 
Um, and and Joe signed his petition. I mean, you know, that's that's amazing. You know, fifteen thousand or uh, thousand five hundred signatures uh, already for that petition. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it, go uh, go sign uh, his petition to get uh, subtitles on your wrestling programming. Uh, support a really great cause. And congratulations again to Max, Max Zaleski for uh, winning interview of the year. Uh, and let's move on to uh, our another another highly contested one this year was moment of the year. Yay! Oh, Yay! I, don't, I, don't know, but when I, I like it when things happen. Yay! Sorry, sorry. Yay! Everybody dance. There was a lot of there was a lot of contention. Everybody dance. You're not dancing. Everybody dance. Uh, uh, uh. Everybody dance. There was a lot of contention for the award this year. Uh, a, a lot of a lot of really great moments. Uh, I will say the runner up for uh, the moment of the year award with twenty one percent of vote hap percent of the vote happened at WMS three forty seven, which was everyone walking out on me uh, when I mentioned the word Ryback, uh, which, that was a, <laughs> which that was a fun one. Uh, but we do have a winner. Your winner for moment of the year for WMS 339. Which one? What? AJ's Moonsault. <laughs> Yay! 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 AJ! AJ's Moonsault. That was that was a that was a really fun one. Uh, uh, and in it. it it was, you know, it, it was a moment, you know, because us as wrestling fans, we want you know, we want to see the, you know, extraordinary things happen, and a moonsault by someone like us is, you know, pretty extraordinary. Um, <laughs> so, uh, congratulations to AJ for picking up that one. Now, I'm going to move to uh, another uh, award for this year was Fan of the Year. Fan of the Year! We have a lot Fan of, of the Year! We have a lot of amazing fans here on the Mayhem Show, and it's time to uh, show them some love. So the nominees, uh, a quick reminder of the nominees for Fan of the Year. We had Alexander Cars, Big PPC, Matt Carlins, Ciro, John Fun, El Gran Azul, and Texas Anarchy. Like, like great nominees with that one. Uh, and the winner for Fan of the Year with... 38% of the total vote, it was a close one, but the winner is Big PPC. Yay! Hey! Hey! It's him! It's him! Yay! It's him! Congrats to Big PPC, always delivering the funny with his email. And uh, we actually have an email from him that we were saving until this <coughs> particular moment. Yes! yes. So, so once box, box are you that. ready, sir? I am ready. I have your music. Hey, 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 it's me, it's me, it's the motherfucking fan of the year, it's Big PPC. This, for me, was out of nowhere. Very happy to be fan of the year. Props to everyone on the show. Chachi Potigiti, thanks for the support. Team Chachi. Special thanks as well as Pop Lunchbox for accent. Potigiti for tips music. Zork for putting all of all the of it together and WrestleFan for putting Mayhem is together. Thanks to Potik the Pop if Town and WrestleFan for doing excellent when Pop Watch Lunchbox was way this past year. Shout out to anyone who voted for me and shout out to other Mayhem Nation of fans. Alex Cars, Texas and Charcy, El Gran Azul, and others. Let hope for a repeat this year and co and for host and co-host of the year and repeat for next year. That's a vote for me, for me, Big BPC. Uh, I enjoyed Rumble even though it was pretty predictable. Cesaro versus Miss was good. Cesaro won, which is where it should be. The Rio Run won with cross arm breaker and Rodriguez duct taped his feet to bottom rope. Yes, this is correct. They used the Batista versus Cena duct tape finish. Too soon? Whatever. Big Show dominated them on Raw. I would just like to point out that it was all legal. 
Mm -hmm. It was all legal. Completely legal. Team Road Scholars and hey, Team Hell no had match per usual. Team Hell no had multiple opponents that were great. Moment in Rumble where Daniel eliminated Kane. Caught Daniel in AJ pose where AJ was straddling Kane a few months back. No! Yes! No! Yes! I would have thrown him back in. Royal Rumble itself was fun to see. Jericho back! Probably my most favorite part was having Chris Je was having Jericho versus Ziggler at the beginning and through most of Rumble. Fan fucking tistic. Godfather Cool Dust Bodellis, aka Bo Rotando, were, were nice surprises. Coffee Pogo sticking the chair to the ring from an table was great. Barrett getting knocked out by Maven's was kind of lame. Motherfucking John Cena with win. Uh, when it comes down to Seamus, Cena and Ryback, there is no winners as far as their fans go. I know Cena would win at that point. I left where I watched and read about how Rock won against Punk because that's the point if Cena wins Rumble, everyone knows Rock is going to win. All we can hope for now is a triple threat match at Mania. By the way, Raw was great. Welcome back, Brock. Hope he destroys Triple H. Won't happen. Triple H needs his revenge. Ah, cause he's the guy. Ah, sounds like he's taking shit. Ah. So, question for the week: uh, Who would you like to see in? Money in the bank match if it happens at Mania. I, I say Barrett, Coffee, Cesaro, Shield, Ryback, right Miz. Uh, what was your favorite Royal Rumble past winner? Bret Hart and Austin are mine. Take care, it's me, it's me, it's big, P, PC, take care, Mayhem Crew. Wait, we have to pick five? Or eight? Well, how many? Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, Shield is three people. Yeah, she, people, um, that's why it's eight. Unless, unless like, they all, like, do it together. Hold on, let me shut the music. There we go. <laughs> We're done with the Tetris music. Yeah. Moving yeah, on. Keep playing. All right, Riz, who do you want to see in Money in the Bank? I have to pick eight. Six. How about this? How about this? Each of us pick two. Okay. Pick two? Yes. Well, first, Great Collie. I <laughs> fucking hate God you. Damn it, Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> No, no, I'm on board. Yes. Come on, he he's going to climb the ladder. Just just saying. And then the next one, uh, who I want? Um Damian Sandow. There we go. All right. Russell fan. Uh the two I want in the money in the bank match uh, would be Kane and Daniel Bryan. Lunchbox? Um, I'm sorry, something awful is happening on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> Brian McKnight's playing. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah, it's weird. Uh, you know what? I'd like to see... Uh, wait, did somebody say Cesaro? No. no. A Cesaro and uh, uh, Wade Barrett. All right. or, or Wade Barrett and Cara. I am going to go with Dolph Ziggler. Um, did someone say Miz? No. No. And Miz. Or Dolph Ziggler and, wait for it, Zack Ryder. I have a reason. Wow, really? Wait, hold on. What um, is your reason? Um, as we are all aware, and as everyone is aware, uh, Money in the Bank is a highly dangerous ladder match. <laughs> So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that uh, if he gets in the match, he falls and breaks something serious. That is, that is my... Uh, you want him in the match only to wish bodily harm on him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, you don't know how many times I've uh, seen uh, that show he does. Which is uh, not, which is isn't there anymore. anymore. Thank yeah. God. Um, and uh, motherfucker, you got canceled. Those those ones that I uh, he did while he was uh, replacing words to songs in his car. <laughs> like you have no idea how many times I've turned those on on mute, 
just a hope for a car wreck. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know. All right, and let's get back to the awards. Let's do it. Uh, it's time for sort of the hotly contested ones. It's the ones where everyone's going to get angry at everyone. So let's do this. Oh, yeah. no, 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 let's be fair. We're oh, not going to get yeah. angry at everybody. Uh, you're gonna get angry We're going to get angry at WrestleFan. So yeah, go ahead, WrestleFan. Okay, so let's start it off with the co-host of the year award. <sighs> Fuck yeah! Uh, race for Impact. Uh, okay, so the nominees... For this year's co-host of the year include Riz. Yay, Riz! Yay, Riz! Who? Wait, wait, what? Last year's <laughs> defending, last year's defending champion, Bo Diggity. Yay, Bo Diggity! Bobby F. J. Town. Yay, Bobby! Yay, Bobby! Hey. Wheels. Woo! Wheels! Yay, Yay Wheels! wheels. And finally, Jim Shireman. Yay! Yay! Shireman! Okay, and your winner for co-host of the year. First of all, I would like to thank everybody who voted for me. I mean, the winner of awards such as co-host of the year. Riz, 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 you're you're coming too soon, buddy. Yeah, I don't think you won, buddy. Um, Your winner with 52% of the vote. Oh, that's a high percent. It's a high it percent from Bo Diggity. What? Yeah, wow. what? Team Tachi, what? Wow. Suck my nuts. Woo! And uh, uh, we because, have a response. Because uh, we anticipated this, uh, Bo, Diddy, Bo Diggity actually responded via video. He couldn't be here, so we connect to him via satellite. But it is I, your two-time co-host of the year. And your new Freebird host of the year, Bo fucking diggity. Hate all you want to, kids. Hate. I hear you hating. Knock, knock. Who's there? Haters. Ha. Hi. <laughs> Hi, haters. So I want you to understand something. It's not going away till 2050. To my man Chachi, who's probably that way. He's right. He's right down there. Hey, Chachi. What's up, my dude? <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Forever. Don't you ever get it twisted. Chachi, Bo Diggity, Freebird Champions Forever. Say no Janetti shit. Say no Shawn Michaels shit. Say no the dudes who were actually in the Freebirds. Say no Michael Hayes shit. Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck them sideways. <laughs> Bo Diggity and Chachi here forever. I accept this award on the behalf of me and motherfucking Chachi. Because it ain't going away. His face is going to be here forever. Ha! Get used to that shit, hoes. Ha ha! Bo fucking diggity. F is for fan fucking tastic. Woo! Get used to this face, hoes. And there you go. That uh, is your co host of the year, Russell Fan. Big congrats to AJ. Before we do the big one, the big one that everyone's been waiting for. We do want to make a, a quick mention, uh, something that we do. Chachi, you're very familiar with this award. Uh, uh, us at the Mayhem Academy, you could say, uh, like to dole out a uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. I've uh, won that award! You won it in the past! That's why I said you knew what it was about! Uh, it's about a, you know... Uh, you know, the mayhem has been rooted, you know, we've been doing this for seven years. We've been, you know, I had a lot of great people that have influenced the mayhem and have done a lot for this, uh, you know, this tiny, what used to be a very tiny show to sort of grow and, you know, uh, and we want to lend out our appreciate to, uh, appreciation to that. So the winner of the Lifetime Achievement Mayhemy, as according to the Mayhemy Academy, is none other than the one only one and only Papa Lunchbox, DJ Lunchbox here. Uh, he brings the funny every week. He's been doing amazing stuff on the Mayhem Show. Always coming up with great ideas. So yes, the winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award, one proper lunchbox. Yay! Motherfuckers! You gotta cue the, Thank the, cheesy, you. the cheesy music. Thank you. 
Thank you kindly. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, I, I do. I do have a couple things that I want to say here. I'll promise I'll keep it brief. Because oh, we all have short I'm attention sorry. spans. That's all the time we have. <laughs> <for it. laughs> Go ahead. I want to. I want to start. I want to thank the fans at home for listening to me rant and rave and curse and be ridiculous for seven years. Um, uh, I, I really appreciate that. I want to thank Sorg, who is who is sick. Presumably on a couch somewhere. Uh, I want to. I want to thank him for keeping me around and uh, giving me a platform to be funny on. Um, I want to. I want to thank uh, everybody else that uh, is on the show currently. Riz, Russell, Fanchachi. I want to thank everybody who is normally on the show but isn't this week. Uh, uh, Bobby, Wheels, AJ, and this is the part where I offend everyone and forget a bunch of people's names, and I'm, I'm very sorry for that. Um, but it's 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 an honor uh, to work with uh, such passionate people and such passionate fans um and it's uh, i think it's it's absolutely fantastic the number of people who started out as just listeners of this show and then they started emailing and leaving voicemails and then they became co-hosts and uh and and people that i genuinely consider friends and it's uh, it's absolutely wonderful um it's it, it, this show has really kept my interest in wrestling alive um because, I mean, I remember back when I was a kid watching pay-per-views with my grandfather in smoky bars, and I would jump up and down and think that it was real, and the, the old guys would sit in the back and just laugh because they were in on the joke, and it was, it, it was amazing, and it was such a great thing, and, uh, and to be able to share that passion with everybody each and every week um, – is is absolutely tremendous it's a joy getting to sit down and talk about wrestling every tuesday night uh what was just once like two or three of us bullshitting has turned into uh an institution a tradition something we can all be genuinely proud of seven fucking years and uh the momentum is uh is is as high as ever so uh i want to thank you guys for this it means the world to me uh to get up and to get to work with you each and every week and as long as i can speak in these sultry tones and come up with really fucked up things to say i'll be right here every single tuesday night thank you thank you very much thank you Thank All you right, me, you're welcome. You on thank your you. lifetime achievement award, and let's go to the chat room really quick. Uh, Mad Mike says this means you have to retire, which is not true because the Beastie Boys have won like six lifetime achievement awards. No one ever retires <laughs> in wrestling. Um, exactly right, and I'm the blackest, whitest Jewish person on the show. <laughs> Alexander Carr <laughs> says you're welcome. Mad Mike points out that you forgot about him. Uh, thank you, Mad Mike. <laughs> thank you. Um, Mad Mike and Alexander Cars and Texas Anarchy. Yes. Uh, Cars said this better not be a farewell speech. Uh, Mad Mike reminds everyone that we are done professionally. And I don't know what that means. Go lunchbox. <laughs> and Texas Anarchy says, "Look at this photograph. Every time I do it, makes me laugh." <laughs> <laughs> Look at this photograph. All right. So let's do this, guys. It's the big, big one. one. It's da, gonna da, da, da. your face. It's the it's, big one. It's time for the host of the year, Mayhemi Award for 2013. Jesus Christ! Oh Lord! Once I have again, a boner right now. Oh God, me too. I'm so uh, excited. Your nominees. Uh. Sorgatron. Yay. Yay! Chachi. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Woo! Papa Lunchbox. Woo! Papa Lunchbox. Yay! Russell Fan. Boo! You Woo. suck. Boo! Woo. Your any minute sucks. <laughs> and and Mad Mike. Woo! Meh. Eh. <laughs> Meh. Meh. Okay, it was a close race. But the if you say what I think you're about to say, I'm gonna walk the, out. The results are tabulated, and the winner of host of the year with forty percent of the vote, two-time host of the year, Chachi. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so unprepared for this. Fuck, man. I'm so, so... 
so unprepared for this. That was so mean. Um, let's see. I would like to thank no one. Fuck you. I did it. And Bo Diggity. Bo, Bo Diggity helped a bunch. Lots. Um, so, I would just like to point out that with this win and the arrangement that I set up with Bo Diggity, that I am the most winningest person in mayhem history. Suck it! And being so, I'm hereby canceling next year Mayhemies. What? They're done. No! You can't do that! I can't do it. It's done. Sorg, Sorg is not going to approve of this, Chachi. I, hey. Sorg's not here, is he? Where, where, where is Sorg, WrestleFan? You fan? killed him. You killed Russell him. Fan. I think, I think. And I you think... fucking put him in a freezer. I know what you hey, fucking did, Chachi. Hey, hey WrestleFan. Not... <laughs> WrestleFan. Yes. I want you to, uh, I want you to get really close to your speaker. Cause I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to whisper sweet things into your ear. <laughs> I, I have headphones, but okay. Sorg's not here. He's not here. He's gone. Yeah, yeah, you know, you, why is he not here, Chachi? Why, why is he not here? He's sick. Why? Yeah, yeah. He, he, conveniently sick on the most important day of all Mayhemies. What? And I think I think there's some, you know, there's some pain on hands or whatever the fuck that catchphrase is. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know, but you did something. No, I, you know, what honestly, um, uh, uh, the funny stuff aside, um, it... it it, like Lunchbox said, it, it's an honor to come here each and every week and uh, completely, ridiculously discuss uh, every facet of wrestling that we we think of. Um, so, yes, uh, thank you. It's an honor. Blah, blah, blah. You can all suck it. Fuck that. I voted for my mic. No, you didn't. No, I didn't at all. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I couldn't even lie on that one. I didn't vote for Mad Mike on that. Sorry. But oh. yes, thank you. Thank you, Mayhem Nation, for all, everyone voting. Like I mentioned, there was a lot of votes this year. We were very happy uh, with the turnout for that. That was this year's 2013 Mayhem Awards. I'm taking this fucking jacket off because it's hot in here. And, <laughs> and yeah. Was- well, now that they're over, I'm going to put a tie on. <laughs> You're going to put a tie on now that it's over. Well, yeah. Who was the, who was the runner-up? Oh, uh, we actually had a tie in the runner-up for host of the year with uh, Sorg and Papa Lunchbox. Oh, nice! Hey, look at that. Way to go! <laughs> yes, uh, Texas Anarchy has pointed out that I will be renaming the company to Chachitron Media. Um, <laughs> and uh, we're taking over. For now, you all have a job still. Yay! Hooray! There will Ozzie be. Floyd. <laughs> there will yeah. be peer reviews uh, starting immediately. Well, we get paid. No, absolutely oh. not. Uh, so Royal Rumble was this weekend. Jobs. Royal Rumble was this weekend. What do you guys think, Lunchbox? What did you think? Yeah, yeah, I thought this it was. Yours. I thought every match was great except for the endings of them. <laughs> Except for Del Rio, I was on board for that one, but like the way every match ended, we were excited and we were enjoying it. We were super into it, and then the match would end and be like, well, um, you guys want to order more food, I guess? (laughs) (laughs) So you weren't happy with the endings? Yeah, not really. I mean, uh, who's excited about Cena winning the Rumble? Who's excited about the weird, screw, screwy finish for The Rock and CM Punk? Uh, who's excited for um, fucking Team Hell No to keep the tag belts? You know, nothing nothing really thrilling happened. Uh, it, here's, here's my thing. Um, match finishes aside, because some of them I agree with you on, and some of them <clears throat> I just don't care. Um, like Team Hell No. I, I don't care if they retain the titles or not. Um, I, I, right I now, what's that? I didn't have a. I, the only problem I have with that match, and it was a great match, and I don't mind the fact that Team Mel Noah champions. It's just the fact they feel like the tag divisions really dwindled. Like we have two tag teams now. Right. Two ta- that's why I don't care. Exactly. Because there's only two, so I I don't I don't care which one of them holds the titles because they're both going to be there each week. 
I'm I'm going to see them both. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, the Del Rio Big Show match was an don't hate me for saying this, but it was an amazing match from start to finish. And I don't like the Big Show. Um, I thought it was a great match. I, I you know, the, it wasn't the fact that the tape thing was used. The, the my problem was the and we I talked about this with Lunchbox, like. The only thing Ricardo did was like tape his ankles to the ropes, and for some and Big Show had to act like I'm a 500 pound dude that can't get out of this. Right. Well, I mean, <coughs> of course he could have gotten out of it. it, it but that ruins the story. You're putting logic in the thing. <laughs> right. Um, if he taped, if he taped like his whole legs to the ropes or something, or like you know, just it was like just his ankle, like. Like, he could have just, like, twisted and he would have been out. Again, you're putting logic into wrestling, WrestleFan. And that that's not right. I mean... No, oh, the, no. It should, f- never, no, should never be done. No. I mean, plus there's not enough... Sorry, I'm moving my camera. There's not enough tape in the world to tape those legs. So they're, they're trying to picture Big Show struggling to get out of the ropes, get out of that like tape. A, he still had, like, a half a roll left. Yeah, it's a, look, I, like I said on the on the, I think it was on the hangout last night. Yeah, I want to get in a, I don't want to get into my own weird history here, but duct tape is not that hard to rip out of. Right. Um, Especially when you're, uh, when you're duct taped to a merry-go-round in a random park, and uh, and people keep spinning it. <laughs> it's not that hard. It's like you're not wearing, so you're not wearing any clothes, and you got a midget sitting on your chest. Even then, it's, I'm telling you, it's not that hard to get out of duct tape. And I'm not even a uh, giant size. I, in, when Sparks correct me, uh, what, at what point in the pay per view does the Royal Rumble match normally happen? Oh, uh, I think aside from maybe once ever, it goes on fucking last. Thank you. Yeah. That was my biggest problem with the entire Royal Rumble pay-per-view. Yes. Besides the fact that it screwed up my, my prediction for who would win the Royal Rumble. But that is... Yeah, fuck you, Rock. All right? You don't come back after 10 years of being away... Say, hey, I'm home, wrestle John Cena, then go away for another six months, and then come back and say that you're going to win the world title at Royal Rumble, and then disappear for four months, and then come back at the Royal Rumble and decide that not only are you going to win the world title, but it has to be the main event. Yeah. Mm. It's, WWE's been doing that, Not, I mean, they've been doing that with all their pay-per-views now, like all their gimmick pay-per-views. Elimination Chamber ended in an ambulance match. There was a night, uh, was the, the night of champions where the main event was Triple H versus CM Punk, and it wasn't even for a title. Like, they keep doing, I, and yes, maybe that's me injecting logic and saying, oh, if it's the name of a pay-per-view, it should probably end the pay-per-view. No, but, that, that, that is just stupid. Yeah. It, it, there's no sense of having money, like, say for money in the bank. There's no sense in having a money in the bank match. Two, both money in the bank matches, not be one of them be the main event. Well, that that's happened before, though. Oh yeah, with I mean, but Cena? still, it's that's... money in the bank. You yeah. go there to see money in the bank to witness money in the bank to because it's titled money in the bank, or you go to elimination chamber because it's. The Elimination Chamber. Yeah. Or you go to the Royal Rumble because it's the fucking Royal Rumble. Just, yeah. say, just saying. I mean, I, I too had that experience of, wait, they're putting this now instead of in the main event of the Royal Rumble? And it kind of fucked with my head a little bit. And then you knew what the outcome was because of what happened at the Rumble. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of, you know, it was like, oh, this is going to happen now. Because with also, the... Go ahead. Because, because with the... If we saw The Rock and CM Punk in where the Royal Rumble was, 
and then the Royal Rumble was then. We still have that inkling of, hey, this can still happen. Rock and Cena can still happen, but even if Cena doesn't win the Royal Rumble. But now with Cena winning, you're like, okay, it's going to be Cena Rock. And we know it, we know who's going to win the, the main event. And it gets, mm-hmm. you know, just meh. Here's an here's another thing. What did you guys think of the actual Rumble match, aside from the fact that it be, not being last? Because for me, like, I thought the surprises were nice. Like, the returns were cool and all that stuff. Other than that, it was kind of meh. It didn't. It, 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 I, I felt like it was short. Uh, it felt shorter than in previous years. I enjoyed the um, the Cody Rhodes versus Goldust stuff. That was pretty interesting. Yep. Um, you're right. There weren't that many surprises. And there well, wasn't, uh, like, a, a comedy thing like there usually is. Um, like last year's, which I really enjoyed, had the whole Santino and Ricardo Rodriguez thing, and and that was actually it was, it was very funny. They had some good comedy stuff and some good surprises. Less, not so much this year. Yeah, and that's the other thing. The big uh, oh, I'll look at him saving himself thing with Kofi Kingston was retarded. But I agree with Mad Mike. That was so stupid. I wouldn't say retarded, but I would definitely say it pales in comparison to the ones in previous years. Well. Not, I, it's 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 dumb in the sense of there's such an easier way to get to the ring. <laughs> like seriously, do, there's so many ways other than grabbing a chair. Also, if you grab the chair, you don't need to use it like a pogo stick. Like it's a chair with wheels, dude. But again, I do agree with you guys. It did seem a little, nah. But I guess that's because, oh, I don't know. They don't want a certain somebody to be outshined. They don't want The Rock to be outshined in the main event. Because the main event is what everybody wants. And they see a good Royal Rumble. They're not going to remember, oh, The Rock was here. Because they're going to remember what happened to the Royal Rumble. Like all those comedy spots or... Amazing crap and all that stuff. And the point about Kofi, it looked like he was going to jump first. And then he yeah. just said no. It looked like it was his his doing that he was going to say no. But yeah, and you know, I, I, di- I didn't watch the pay-per-view live. I was on the road going back to San Antonio. And I was looking at my Twitter stream and I was just like, okay, glad I didn't miss much. Don't, don't, don't be in drive. No, no, I wasn't driving when I was. Don't right don't there. tweet and drive. I, I was stopped at I was stopped at a rest stop. Okay. Oh yeah, you were. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. okay. all right, guys. <laughs> rock Cena or Rock CM Punk. Mm. Eh. I thought the ending was really it was, dumb. It was good until the end. <laughs> and okay, not even the end with the Rock restarting the match thing. The ending with the whole shield thing was dumb. If they would have left with Punk leaving the title because somebody who may be the shield, but they darkened the building so you couldn't see, that would have been super dumb. I uh, I, I think it was um, s- uh, s- Smarking Out or Snarking Out or whatever her name is who tweeted, um, and I have to agree with her that you know the, the ending was really fucking stupid, but uh, the line... You don't take it from him. I take it from him. That's the best thing The Rock has said since he came back. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. That was fucking awesome. Yeah. Also, can... also, Vince McMahon had no reason to like strip Punk of the title. The only idea, the only evidence of them saying that it was the Shield was because Michael Cole said it was the Shield like twenty times when it happened. It mm-hmm. has to be the Shield. Like you don't know that, Michael Cole. Yeah, Michael oh, Cole no, does Vince know that because he knows Punk's everything. Bad guy. <clears throat> it's yeah, ridiculous. I, also, also, what's with Rock uh, with Spanish announce tables and him and them breaking before they, he's able to hit his move? <laughs> no, <laughs> the best moment no, to the Rock. The best moment of the whole match was the Rock taking off the top of the Spanish announce table, and a few minutes later. CM Punk picking the top back up 
and placing it back on the Spanish announce table. Mm-hmm. He did it twice, <laughs> and then he then he took it and he took it off and then went through the table accidentally. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, uh, that you guys, happened in the Rocks Champion, and you know. You want to talk about Raw really quick? <laughs> yeah, Raw. I'd like to talk about Raw really quick. Um, so, uh, Riz, you were in the Hangout last night, right? Yes, I was. Uh, I have a question for you. What time about was it that I fell asleep? Oh, 10-ish? Was it around 10? Yeah. It was around 10, 10.30. It was, it, was, it was quarter after 10. And for those yeah. that weren't in the hangout, Lunchbox wasn't just Eastern. like, oh, I'm sort of tired. He was dead. Yeah. <laughs> I Pass fell asleep. Out. He, he and Watson were cuddle buddies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was out. I fell asleep. I was, I was on my couch in the hangout. I had uh, the hangout on one laptop and I had Raw on the other hangout. And at some point, I fell the fuck asleep. And at about, I don't know, like 4 o'clock in the morning, I wake up. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? My my laptop still up. The hangout closed long ago because the sleepy robot kicked me out. My other laptop's dead. Uh, I think it overheated, and I'm just laying there like, oh, what what happened? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's I think how raw it was. That was the first time anybody has slept <laughs> on the hangout. We've had people like pass out or like you know, they do they the days blackout maybe I don't know, but they mm-hmm. come right back snap into it. But Munchbox was out. Mm-hmm. Like if I if if we were there live, we would have probably drew penises on your faces, Munchbox. You should have. You absolutely should have. I started to fall asleep at one point. Y'all yelled at me, and uh, I woke up. and I was out again. <laughs> Because we we didn't know what you were doing, Lunchbox. We thought you were dead. Well, uh, I I watched uh, five minutes of it. And (laughs) And then went to bed. Well, yes, because uh, Sunday night into Monday, I didn't sleep at all. Um, I just couldn't fall asleep. So I was already up for uh, 28 hours, 29 hours at that point. So when I laid down to watch Raw... I, I just passed out immediately. Yeah, how how lame was Raw last night? Like seriously. Also, from all the matches and all like the segments and stuff like that, or the competitions that they had, how many of them had a winner? Like so many, like they they just ended, and like nothing happened. Divas match. Divas match. The karaoke, the karaoke game, match, which the was dance awesome, off, by the way. The uh, body slam challenge. Yeah, the body slam challenge was weird. Because oh, they could have done anything with that, and then they just went, no, let's, t- let's duct tape Del Rio and have him, and get have him beat, beat up. up. No, it was, it and, was well, he did, well, Big Show did slam Ricardo. So that happened. All right. that counts. So it was Matt, Mad Mike brings up a good point. When you have the announcers apologize for three segments in a row, it's not a good show. <laughs> yeah, right. that was an okay. People can hate all you want. That was an episode of NXT season four with bigger names. <laughs> all right, and NXT and season four was much funnier. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for what you learned in wrestling this week. Wrestle fan. I learned uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan were the greatest thing in the Royal Rumble. Oh, I wish they would have kissed. Amazing. That would have brought a whole new dimension to that tag team. I do. The only thing I do wish was that Doctor Shelby was one of the entrants, but eh, you can't get them. You can't win them all. Hey, while while we're doing this chat room, uh, throw your uh, favorite. Throw it at us. Yeah, lunchbox. What'd you learn? I learned that Tensai is embarrassed when he has to wear more clothing than the clothes that he wrestles in. <laughs> yep. Because he had his trunks on 
and he thought it was a lingerie match, so he wore a, uh, a very nice lace teddy and a thong over his trunks. And when he found out it wasn't a lingerie match, he covered it. Do you know- he covered his parts that were already covered and are normally uncovered yeah. and rubbing against other men. What the fuck was that? Two <laughs> notes with that. One, I agree, he should have just wore his trunks because his trunks look like edible panties. Like, come on. <laughs> And like we said before, how do you know what edible t- edible panties look like? Rest They're fan? fruit roll up panties. I mean, come on, everyone knows that. And two, <laughs> everybody I love that, knows I love it. That, I love that after he took his lingerie off and they told him it wasn't a lingerie pillow fight, he that's when he was like, "What? Um, maybe the fact that he came to the ring, there were no pillows anywhere. Mm-hmm. There was no pillows. There was no bed." Maybe that would have given him the hint that it wasn't a lingerie pillow fight. I don't know. Liz, dumb segment. What'd you learn? I learned the great Kali is the best singer in the world. <laughs> All right. That that and the Godfather. I want him to come back full time. All right. Let's see. Uh, Alexander uh, Alexander Cars learned that nothing puts Lunchbox out like an awful episode of Raw. Bad Mike <laughs> learned that he feels bad for people who don't get to use DVR to watch Raw every week. Uh, Alexander Cars is keeping pictures of LB sleeping. Stocky. <laughs> That's so that is creepy. creepy. Um, Bo Diggity says Bo Dallas is a gimmick stealing motherfucker, and if you call Bo Dallas Bo Diggity, I'll fucking stab you. <laughs> uh, Bo Diggity learned that WrestleFan would eat 10 size fruit roll up panties. Woo! Uh, well, of course he is. And uh, Mad Mike says that I think Ron might have been booked by Cranky Vince. Wrestling Resolution says that I learned that Great Kali can't read. Shut your face. Oh. Shut well, your face about the Great Kali. Great Kali is terrible. Go fuck yourself. Oh, Chachi. Bobby Chachi. of Town learned that Rosa Mendez can rock a feather showgirl hat and that the Godfather should have stayed backstage at the Rumble. <laughs> Chachi, what did you learn from wrestling what did this I week? I learned from wrestling this week. Well, considering that the only wrestling I watched was Sunday for the Rumble or Saturday, um, I would just like to point out that the theme of this weekend's wrestling was if you turn the lights out during the main event, no one will know what happens. Because uh, the same thing happened during the IWC event that I was at, and of course during the uh, the main event at the pay per view Sunday, and both times people were attacked, and both times you couldn't see who did it because they turned the lights off. So, yeah, Chuck Chuck Roberts is booking WWE. Yep, <laughs> Chuck Roberts. So. You have been listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can find us here every week, each and every week, at 9 p.m. or 8.30 roundabouts, live.circuitronmedia.com. You can also download the show afterwards at on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Blip TV, Roku, YouTube, or, Bing. and, you can email us. Good times! Uh, at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or give us a call on the Mayhem Show hotline at 412-206-WMS0. That's 9670. Or you can just buy the app. We or, all have it right here on the thing. Or if you want all of these things in one handy-dandy little location that you keep in your pocket anyhow, go over to the iTunes or Amazon store for your i app for your Apple or Android devices, and download, and Riz, Riz has it up. Oh, uh, the there it is. The Mayhem Look. Show app. It lets you listen to it. It lets you visit us on Facebook, you can, Google+. You can Plus, tweet us. You can space. follow us. You can, you can, you can tweet email, us. Email, call the show, call, visit the website, and troubleshoot. And for $1.99, you get extra content that you don't get to hear anywhere Ooh. else from us, and it's, it's usually content. hilarious. Usually. It's always hilarious. Bonus content. Wrestling Resol- Revolution says he wants to keep it in his pocket right next to his dick. Uh, I am Chachi. At Chachi says on the Twitter for Papa Lunchbox. Riz. 
wrestle fan. Wrestle fan kind of shaved. And, I just realized that. And not really, not at all. Room that has been going the all night long. Thank you for rest- listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. wait.